Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan, and today I'm very pleased to bring you the very first look at Bailey's new camper van. Now we seem to be waiting for this nearly as long as we waited for Bay Bailey's first motorhome, but it is finally here. Or is it? Because this is March, and you won't be able to watch this video for some time yet, because this vehicle isn't being released to the public until the NEC show in October. So this is a bit of a special preview for me, and we'll have to wait until Bailey lift the embargo to show it to you. It's also a bit of a special test because of where we are. This isn't Manchester or Milton Keynes, it's Marrakesh in Morocco. Now, I've spent a couple of nights in this van on this campsite just outside the city, Urika Camp. But you don't want to know about the souks that I visited yesterday. You want to know about this new Bailey. It's called the Endeavour, and there are two models in the range to start with. This rear lounge B62, six metre two berth, and a B64, which have a front lounge, a pop top, and four berths. Both are based on a six metre Ford Transit. So that gives them a real USP in a market dominated by Fiat Ducatos and Peugeot Boxers. And Bailey has also made Henry Ford very proud because Henry Ford liked his Model T in any colour as long as it's black. Bailey has just twisted that slightly for the 21st century, and you can have your Endeavour camper van in any colour, as long as it's blue. Externally, Bailey has gone for a very automotive look, so no fancy go-faster stripes or silly squiggles, just a very plain, clean look these black graphics around the windows which incorporate the sort of little mountain signatures which I rather like, especially as the Atlas Mountains are just over there. And of course, being a Bailey, everything you see pretty much is standard equipment. There's one high standard spec and prices haven't been firmed up as I'm filming this. We'll flash up the price on the screen, but I'm expecting it to be very competitive and certainly under 70 grand, they hope. So, the spec. Alloy wheels are standard. Metallic paint, we've already covered that, is standard. The electric step, which auto retracts, standard. These nice aluminium framed flush windows, of course, standard. Yes, you get the awning as well, with this awning light at the top of the sliding door. and. Actually, that awning will be a fraction longer on the production vehicles. Down the back here, you've got your mains hookup, of course, and then on the roof, you've got a TV aerial and an 80 watt solar panel. The Endeavour will come with an overcab sunroof, but it might not actually be one quite the same as this because Bailey's hoping to change to a glass panel of a slightly wider aperture. As yet, unfortunately, there's no fly screen available for this big Ford Transit sliding door. That's an issue, of course, because the Fiat and Peugeot has so dominated this market. But if one comes, I'm sure Bailey will fit it. Water tanks are underslung, 80 litres heated and insulated for the fresh, and a rather small 41 litres for the grey with this rather small fiddly tap to drain it. I'd like to see something a little better than that, but that's quite typical on camper vans, I'm afraid. At the back, of course, you've got the 
original Ford barn doors, again glazed with these framed windows. Not sure whether this bike rack is standard, so we'll flash that up on the screen. But I like the way the rear bumper incorporates a step. That is a useful feature. You see the TV aerial there, that is standard. The only things that I'm aware of being optional on this particular vehicle are the Avtex onboard Wi-Fi system and the TV screen itself. Included as standard, you get an underslung gas tank, 25 litres, so plenty of gas. There's your Truma vent, it's a Truma Combi 4 E gas and electric blown air system as well as your boiler. Fresh water filler of course and the toilet cassette mounted neatly so that it doesn't interrupt the flow of this moulding down the side but we'll see how that impacts on the position of the loo later on but it is a very smart looking vehicle and you'll notice too that it's quite tall because of the internal arrangements, which we'll come on to later, Bailey has had to go for the extra high or H3 version of the transit. But that does bring various advantages, as we'll see later on. So after a long day driving through some of the most spectacular scenery, probably on planet Earth, we've arrived at campsite number two for night number three. We're at 8 Benadou. Apologies for the pronunciation, which is probably very poor, but look at that view. This is where they filmed Gladiator and I'm told various other films too. Well, I could just sit here all evening and look at that incredible view. This historic town, the moonscape scenery. <laughs> Who needs an Avtex TV? It's a 20 inch screen, that's one of the few options as I mentioned, but wow, no. These rear lounge camper vans are made by days like this. It's 25 degrees out there, despite the fact it's getting on for six o'clock in the evening. And well, what a wonderful place to sit. As you can see, Bailey have gone for a wraparound rear lounge. When the doors are closed, of course, this centre cushion is firmly held in place by the back doors. But at the moment, there's nothing to keep it there. You could, you could just remove the centre part of the wraparound U-shape and turn it into just two straight sofas, if you prefer, and if you want access through the van, through those back doors. Useful if you want to load paddle boards or something on board. And nice just to have the option of that access through the back doors. Whichever way you have the lounge set up, it's a really good space for, well, just kicking off your shoes and putting your feet up. These settees are both 1.88 metres or 6 foot 2 inches long. But looking at this area shows the challenges that Bailey had in fitting a layout that's more, more usually seen in 6 metre Fiat Ducatos and Peugeot boxers into the more shaped, more restricted confines of the Ford Transit. Now, these very automotive mouldings around the vehicle look great, but they also reveal how Bailey have shaped the, the sides of the trim at the side of the van to maximise the space. So you've actually got, um, either in bed or settee format, um, behind these backrests, over, just over six foot across the vehicle, which is quite an achievement in a Ford Transit. The other thing that they've done is that, well, again, to get that height or to get that width, the seats have got to be fairly high. And, well, if they didn't raise the floor, you'd sit with your legs dangling like a toddler in a high chair. 
However, they've raised the floor by 90 millimetres right through the vehicle. You've got over 70 millimetres of styrofoam insulation in there, as well as pipe runs and that sort of thing. So it really used that space and achieved a flat floor through the vehicle. What that's also done is meant that these seat boxes are really, really deep for storage. And it does explain the use of the H3 panel van, the tallest transit available. But when I stand up, you can see the advantage of that because, well, at the back here, um, you've got in places almost two metres or almost six foot six headroom. You won't get that in a Fiat Gigante. You can see the same automotive finish on the back doors and of course the opening windows with the pleated blinds. This patterned material will be swapped for a plain one in production. You can also see the external storage into the seat bases. Now it's just a very small locker on this side, but over here you've got a long axis right into that seat base. So long, those stick type chairs will go in there, your main seat, all that sort of thing. All your outdoor gubbins can just go straight in there without messing about with lifting the seat cushions. Now the settee bases are split on both sides to ease access, particularly into the front sections. The slatted seat bases themselves are on these sprung hinges and on the near side you've got a huge amount of space to use. I've got soft bag in there, mainsley, water bottles, all sorts of stuff and still loads of room. The only thing that takes up any space in there is the um, RCD unit and the habitation area fuses. Over on this side you've got the Truma Combi boiler in the front part of the settee base but still back here is plenty more storage. Okay you do have to move some of the cushions to get really easy access into the space but still it's deep generous storage. So I've popped the back doors shut again because it was getting a bit breezy out there and it's finally cooling off and this is how you perhaps best appreciate this rear lounge as a lovely comfortable place to relax. Look at the generosity of the lighting too. You've got ambient lights across the top lockers, you've got down lights and best of all, you've got these directional reading lights with built-in USBs. So lighting, you can't fault. You've got opening windows on all three sides, but be careful if you open that one, because it will clash with the sliding door if you open that in a bit of a hurry. You get these scatter cushions, only one choice of upholstery, of course, because this is a Bailey. But isn't it nice to get away from beiges and browns? I quite like this. And there's not a lot of wood either. What there is is nice pale wood, so it doesn't feel dark and oppressive in here. But with these mouldings, the grey wall on the side of the washroom there, it does feel much more contemporary. And not only that, you've got really good ventilation with this little diddy roof light and a full-size push-up hecky. When you want to convert lounge into dining room, well, the table leg is stored under the settee. I've suggested to Bailey that they move it more conveniently into the wardrobe. It's one of these fittings where you screw down the leg and then the table itself is stored immediately behind the driver's seat. What's surprising about the table is if you look at the thickness of it, you'd expect it to weigh about three quarters of a tonne, but actually it's very lightweight and, well, it's tolerably stable too, as good as these island legs usually are. I'm afraid there are no brownie points for realising that two settees 
become two single beds. Of course, the length I've already said is 1.88 meters or six foot two. Width is quite slim. 580 millimeters is the actual width of these cushions, which of course use single bed mattresses. However, if you measure into the wall here, so you sort of elbow room, if you like, is 630 millimetres, which therefore is over two foot and therefore much more competitive. But you don't have to sleep singly. If you dive under this bed base, you can extract this triple folding panel, which then fills the aisle, and then you deploy the backrest cushions with a section removed to make a double. So, slats in place, and this is the section of backrest that you need to remove on each side. It's the, sh it's the part that enables it to sit comfortably into the recess on the side wall. Of course, only being small, these easily slot in underneath the bed. And then they fit together as neatly as a couple of bits of Lego. Although I'm not demonstrating it perhaps as well as I should, because I really am ready for bed. And a bed that is 1.72 metres wide, if you measure the actual mattress, 1.84 metres wide, or just over six foot, if you measure into the wall on each side. Either way, of course, where well, you could sleep across the vehicle, but why would you? You'd sleep lengthways, because that makes access easier, and it's a good size bed, and you really don't notice any ridges. Then if you wake in the morning before your partner, you've still got somewhere to sleep because the passenger cab seat swivels round. Sitting here, you've got blinds all the way around. You've got that big over cab sunroof, but most importantly, you've got another reading light. Great to see that. What you haven't got is any form of table and there's no worktop flap on this end of the kitchen. So you'll just have to stretch across for your drink. Perhaps the biggest challenge of all with converting this transit was in this central aisle because this space can feel very narrow and with the reduced width of the transit it could have been a real issue, especially as Bailey wanted to incorporate a proper cooker with oven and grill. So what they've come up with is a washroom that sort of half disappears during the day and then expands when you need to use it. You can still get through when the bathroom's expanded, but during the day, during the, well, the vast majority of your camping time, you've got a lovely wide aisle. It's up to about 760 millimeters between this oven handle and the widest point here. So plenty of room, open cupboard doors, get down, open things. It's a good, practical space. And then when you need the washroom, this section of floor lifts out. Now, in the production vehicles, I'm told that they're going to be modifying this slightly so that you can rotate the timbre door without lifting this panel with a bit of carpet that sort of disguises the whole thing. So if you're not gonna use the shower, you'll be able to leave that in place. At the moment, you just lift that panel out and then and rotate the tambador around. You can still get through. You could still finish off the toast if somebody was desperate for the facilities. But of course, now you can see that it is a much more confined gangway. 
The other advantage of doing the washroom this way is once you've swiveled the tambour around, you've got really good space in here. Usual swivel cassette toilet, a basin that is a nice fixed unit with room to get your face over to give it a good splash. This panel behind the basin is going to be changed to a moulding so you won't have wood finish there on the production vehicles. The shower itself, where well, you've got two drains, it drains really well out of this shower tray and you have got plenty of space to shower. The curtain just goes across here behind me just to cover the furniture. It doesn't go all around you, so it doesn't get in the way, it doesn't cling to you as they horribly do sometimes. And the shower head is just the tap pulled out. Nowhere to actually hang a towel unless you hang it over where the shower head clips onto the wall, but that worked for me. Storage, you've got cupboard below the sink and up top here, but the space I found really useful is the little recesses, the little pockets behind me, which are ideal for shampoo, conditioner, deodorant, all that sort of stuff where it's really easy to access. So the only downsides to this space, well, the loo is very high, unless you've got very long legs, your feet are going to dangle. And also, if you need to use this space in the night, then sliding this timbre door around might just wake your partner. And so to the kitchen, what well, you've already seen that you've got plenty of room to use it. And I've already shown you that you've got a full cooker. Thetford Triplex, obviously a well-known unit in the industry. Three gas rings here, and then the combined oven and grill below. Nice sink with an inset basin. When the cooker lid is down, you can add a removable draining board. Storage is in cupboards rather than drawers, so it's not quite as convenient, but there is a little cutlery drawer inside the main cupboard. So you've got good size for all your utensils and cutlery in there. And then worktop. Well, unusually, there's no worktop at this end, although you have got these useful storage recesses and there's a main socket on the end there too. But at this end, you have got a worktop flap, and I think that's a much better idea because down at this end, it's partially blocking the doorway, and, well, people might knock stuff off if they're trying to squeeze in and out of the van. Here, it's not in anybody's way, and if you're just sitting in the rear lounge, it's also a coffee table. What you haven't got, unfortunately, is a main socket at this end of the kitchen, and that's something that I'd like to see added. The top blockers are a really good size too. That's another benefit of this extra high Ford van because the top blockers are that much deeper. And then over on this side, the fridge is a decent size too, 84 litres. It's a compressor fridge, so you just switch that on and forget all about it. The wardrobes above, and I'm told that the hanging rail will run side to side in the production ones rather than front to rear, which is not so practical. It's not a very generous depth. It's sort of shirt and jacket length at best. Um, and while you see in some layouts like this, the fridge mounted above the wardrobe, which arguably is the better way around, that can't unfortunately be done in the transit. It's one of those things that because of the space here, it has to be this format. So driving this Bailey Endeavour and driving in Morocco too. Well, once we're out of the madness of Marrakesh with suicidal pedestrians and uh, motorbikes everywhere, actually driving here is very easy, just as it's very easy driving this Ford Transit with the 170 PS engine and six-speed automatic gearbox as standard. 
it's um, well, it's got plenty of performance. Gearbox is very smooth. It's uh, a very car-like drive. Really, it helps having this small uh, steering wheel. Really good adjustment on the steering column too. Good all-round visibility. Although when you park up, you could do with a, a reversing camera, which uh, will be an optional feature. You won't get this rather basic radio on the production vehicles. You'll get the the big um, or bigger transit central display unit um, which will include your Bluetooth and radio and so on and then if you have the reversing camera it will be on that screen. Ride quality being the Ford is so much better than the Fiat's and Peugeot's. A bit more lean perhaps in the corners um, but it is, it is generally a, a more car-like drive. Driving position is good um, with twin armrests, of course. If you're very tall, you'll need to check it out because I've got the, the seat back pretty much as far as it'll go touching the furniture behind me. Um, so if you're very, very tall, you'll, you'll need to, to check out that you can get comfortable behind the wheel. Other than that, well, the road surfaces in Morocco um, come in two forms, either billiard table smooth or, well, falling apart basically and full of ruts and god knows what so on the smooth surfaces um, this van is very quiet good engine noise refinement um, not much conversion noise when the going gets rough yes there are some rattles but hey this is a prototype and most of the rattles come from the blinds so that bodes well for the production vehicles all in all it's a really nice drive. So that is the Bailey Endeavour B62. Sure to be one of, if not the star of this October's NEC Caravan and Motorhome Show. Yes, you need to check out the driver's seat adjustment if you're very tall and perhaps check out the washroom and see that that arrangement is going to suit you but this is a great addition to the two-berth camper van market. Rear lounge layout, of course, is proven and so, so popular, and Bailey have done a cracking job of introducing it into the Ford Transit. And I have to say, I would much, much rather have a Ford Transit than a Fiat Ducato or Peugeot Boxer in this six metre size. It just feels so much more like a car on the road. I hope you've enjoyed our latest camper van review. Please keep subscribing, keep watching for the latest content and keep exploring in your camper van, even if you don't get anywhere quite as exciting as they better do.